Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, okay, 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 great. So, hello everyone, uh, and a very good evening to all our guests. On behalf of ISTD Delhi Chapter, I extend a very warm welcome to all our guests. So today we are delighted to come with a yet another Golden Jubilee Evening Talk series. And uh, today we have a very distinguished speaker amidst us, and he's Dr. S.K. Acharya. Uh, he's an independent director, Bhuvaneshwar Smart City Limited. He's a former CMD, NLC India Limited, uh, a mining and power, Maharatna. Uh, so he'll be speaking to, uh, on the topic, um, transformational learning for holistic development. Uh, friends, the purpose of learning should be to develop the self and others through acquisition of knowledge, its internalization, dissemination, and application to make everybody a better human being. It should aid and facilitate the journey, the transformation of humans to being human, with drive for holistic excellence to promote well being of a larger society. So these are some of the thoughts Dr. Acharya will be sharing with us. Um, a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Acharya, and thank you very much for agreeing to speak to our members. Thank you, sir. So um, I would now like to call upon our chapter chairperson, Mr. Mukesh Jain, to give his welcome address. Over to you, Mr. Jain. Thank you, Prithima ji. A very good evening, friends. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. I, on behalf of Management Committee of ISTD Delhi Chapter, welcome you all to this Golden Jubilee evening lecture on transformational learning on holistic development by none other than our own Dr. Sharad Kumar Acharya, Independent Director, Bhuvneshwar Smart City Limited and former CMD, NLC India. Friends, Indian Society for Training and Development, ISTD has celebrated its Golden Jubilee recently. ISTD maintained a large chapter network of more than 46 chapters and 8,000 institutional and individual members of the society. So, society is affiliated to IFTDO and USA and RTDO Manila. Friends, during the Golden Jubilee year, ISTD is giving 50% for more details, please log in to istd.co.in or istddaily.in. I once again welcome Dr. Acharya sir, our past uh, national presidents, chapter chairperson, NC members, senior members and friends from ISTD, NIPM, NHRD, ISTD diploma students, faculty member and students from BIMTECH and other institutes. I wish you all for a very wonderful evening and joyful weekend sir. Namaskar, over to Pratma ji. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Jain. Um, now, I would like to request our secretary, Mr. Ajay Sahu, to introduce the speaker. Mr. Sahu. Good evening, everyone. It's my uh, pleasure and uh, proud privilege to introduce Dr. Uh, Dr. S.K. Acharya wears many hats. Uh, he is the former chairman uh, and managing director of uh, NLC India, uh, in which he was the director HR prior to taking over the, uh, the chairmanship. Uh, before that, he was uh, the general manager HR of uh, NTPC. In fact, he was in NTPC from 1980 till uh, about 2010 and rose to become the direct, uh, GM HR of NTPC as well as the joint venture of NTPC uh, and SAIL, uh, NSPCL. And uh, he started his career uh, in, in BHEL as a management trainee, uh, along with, I think, uh, Mr. Dabas. And uh, uh, I mean, th th there are uh, people who are from HR and there are people who are uh, from the line side as chairman. But uh, there are very few people, you can count on your fingers, who have Don both the hats of uh, HR leader as well as the business leader. Uh, I can you can count on your fingers like uh, people like Rusi Modi who rose to be the the CEO of uh, Tata Steel. Uh, 
uh, uh, Anne Mulcahy, who rose to be uh, the head of uh, uh, Xerox. So uh, it's it's uh, really uh, our proud privilege to have someone who has risen from uh, the HR side, the software side of uh, business, to to uh, head the uh, PNL side uh, as the chairman and managing director. So who better to learn about transformational leadership than uh, Dr. Acharya? Welcome, Dr. Acharya. Uh, and thank you for uh, agreeing to give this talk to us. Over to Prithimaji. Thank you. And yours, Dr. Acharya. Uh, we'll have a 45 minutes um, uh, talk, and then we'll have 10, 15 minutes for the Q&A. Right? Good evening. Am I audible? You are. Uh, the pleasure and privilege is mine. Thank you, Pratimaji and uh, Mukesh Saab, Ajay, for all your good words about me, which I acknowledge with uh, humility, dedicating it to the team then and team now. Whatever I am, whatever I have done, the entire credit goes to the team that helped me doing it. And now also, my chapter of learning is not closed, it continues. And uh, I just thought when uh, Ajay spoke to me uh, to talk on something related to training, learning, and development, that is the main purpose, main uh, thing of what ISTD uh, stands for, I thought, uh, uh, having experienced uh, training and having taken learning and development initiatives in the organizations I work, uh, I added something to me, uh, specifically all those learnings I assimilated. But uh, perhaps going beyond that, uh, if you can use all this learning to transform the persons, we all are human beings, but uh, maybe the learning can be used to transform all of us to be human. That is the central theme of my talk. And I will be in the process challenging many uh, status quo things. Maybe I'll be agitating your mind to think differently and also to infuse new ways of training, not only in terms of methodology, not only in terms of pedagogy, but also as a content, how we can, of course, to start with education as such, the very learning, it is not limited only to education. In fact, if we speak of learning, learning that has been there from time immemorial, and it is not only restricted to humans, even animals, at all living beings, they also learn the, the process. But here with humans having the super intellect, we learn, starting from the day one, that yes, we know unless a baby cries, perhaps the mother will not be feeding the milk. But there in the initial phase, all those pain, pleasure, hunger, all those things are expressed. And also we learn in the process that what are the uh, learning inputs uh, uh, to be given and what are the things we are expecting. But over the years, uh, once we keep growing, then it is the parents from whom we learn, and uh, uh, specifically starting with the mother, then of course with the father, and then the parents we put together, the society we grow in, and all over. So that learning is something which continues. These learnings are going to happen, but how much we assimilate, how much we internalize, that depends on us. And in the initial phases, we are not, of course, Shuji. We keep on learning mostly from observation and also from experience. But once we grow up, then the process of education that we have been put through, uh, my generation I will speak of, I will speak of the generation of our uh, children uh, because I belong to the group of baby boomers. And now it is not the Gen X. Millennials, of course, will be much more joining in and coming in. And then the next generation will be coming. And over the years, of course, we grew in terms of the civilization, but somehow I don't think uh, we really enriched the process of our education 
to make us the full human being uh, that we are supposed to be. Uh, uh, take the case of uh, Gurukul. Gurukul, uh, if you take, uh, if we speak from the epics or the mythology, uh, excuse me for that, I will use a disclaimer over here. I'll be drawing a lot, drawing uh, strength from uh, various uh, uh, stories of epics, of mythology, of Vedas, but uh, definitely these are not for preaching any religion as such, because there are learnings available, and I, use, I would like to utilize those learnings for our purpose over here. So with that disclaimer, let me proceed. Uh, in Gurukul, the learning was always holistic. It started with a rigorous physical training, training of the mind, and training them spiritually. The material aspect was there always because the world is materialistic, but at the same time, it never encouraged all those materialist aspects at the cost of spiritualism, at the cost of doing good for the society, doing good for the environment, doing good for the ecology. And in fact, if you remember, it is not those, even those days, we used to worship uh, the trees, worship the uh, mountains. So environment ecology is something that we are not learning today. In all our uh, life earlier, we used to, it was not sort of a, a ritual, it was not sort of a superstition, but yes, we knew the sources of energy and always we worshiped that. So with that, the Gurukul sort of education, which was there, over the years, of course, uh, uh, the history uh, has undergone many changes, uh, starting from uh, Rama's period that was Treta and then Dwapar, and then coming to what we call the Kali Yuga here, though I may not be exactly speaking on those lines, but what I'm trying to tell that our civilization grew, so also our pattern of education changed, methods of education changed, and the content also underwent a great change. And what we find in the schools we inherited from the British legacy uh, that we drifted away from the environment, from the basic values, and also we shied away from teaching our children the rich heritage and the legacy that we inherited. Uh, so I'm speaking only in Indian context. I'm not referring to the education outside because I compare then also our education will stand at a low footing because here we just put stress on assimilation through mogging. We hardly encourage the creative learning and also the value education and what to be done, what not to be done. These things are never emphasized the way it should be. And also when we talk in terms of holistic education or holistic learning should take into account not only the cognitive process, but also the entire body, mind, and spirit. So basically what we're talking of, can the learning be for kaya What we tell that it is in the physical dimension, yes, the learning has to be there. One has to have a healthy body and also a good mind with good intellect. And then the spiritual aspect relates to the society or you, uh, the way we relate to the people, to the environment, where we keep on doing good things and we don't compromise our basic values for doing something in a shortcut or using the unfair means. These fair and unfair things are always related. I will not debate into that. To me, perhaps, a good thing is perhaps which goes for doing the good to the community or at large or the people at large. And for the younger generation, those who have joined us, they may find it slightly sort of a sermon type, but it's not sermon what I'm telling. It is from a practical experience that we as parents, maybe many people of my age or the contemporaries would ask themselves, did we really impact, uh, impact the value-based education to our children? Did we look into the school, school curriculum to tell them what one should do in terms of conduct, in terms of behavior, in terms, we just thought that our child should be scoring good marks, should be topping the class, but this academic excellence is not enough unless your child is having a good health, a good body, and unless he is a good child 
in society who is adored for his good behavior. So those sort of things. You take the case of uh, Sujamani Jajbeshan. They are there from the very beginning. They're taught to how to maintain hygiene. In fact, students are responsible to keep tidy and uh, maintain the cleanliness of their school premises. And there, their meeting and greeting is something which perhaps we all should learn. Of course, we have the Namaste thing again coming in, not the second, not the embrace as such. But there, it is the uh, in thing they start learning these things from the very beginning. And how to say thank you, how to acknowledge, and then how to protect yourself physically, as well as, uh, of course, debating, eloquence, and others we follow. But at the same time, value education so far has been a casualty um, at the school level, at the college level. And if I talk of the MBAs, which do, uh, take us, uh, teach us the business management, the business principles, that we are told how to run the business to make profit. The competition, yes, how to fight the competition. And then uh, uh, when the competition is cut through, perhaps nobody says that uh, the governance, when it comes to the good governance, it comes at the last level where you talk in terms of the corporate governance. But to ensure that good corporate governance at all levels of people, then we just don't live, put much of a passage. And then our training also throughout, because ISTD basically was doing training in many uh, places. They have good, good trainers. But all those trainers, what I have found myself in my this thing, we teach them the skill, of course, the aptitude also on many occasions we do, but it is basically skill and competency building. And skill and competency building, yes, those learnings are required. So that, in fact, makes a man uh, uh, climb up the ladder, contributing better so that we enhance the performance by, by enhancing the competency levels. And of course, it adds to the productivity. But the ways and means that are adopted for running the business, these are the things very overtly we don't teach or there is no specific charter we uh, publish uh, where, except in perhaps the vigilance which works as a deterrent, except in perhaps CVC, that we know that if you violate, if you do something or if you uh, indulge in a conduct, which is not a conduct but a misconduct, then we'll be punished. But that inner drive, inner sanitation, cleaning yourself, all those things are never a part of our teaching program or in the learning aspect, we don't. Perhaps what I would be talking, I'd be talking in terms of engineering yourself, the inner engineering. Engineering engineering basically a transformation of self, which will be uh, deepening our perspective to look into various things from the positive viewpoint, uh, identifying the negative sides, which we should keep aside and accept the positive things, which will go for developing self and developing the others. And in fact, dear friends, if we talk of transformation, it is not something new. I'm just trying to help this August audience uh, to dust off whatever has been there because they knew all the stories I'll be telling, all the episodes I'll be telling, the things are nothing new. Maybe I was, trying, I was just trying to educate your minds so that the focus goes to a holistic learning uh, starting from the purpose to process to the final outcome. So here, if we uh, take the case of transformation, at least uh, in animal world, uh, the uh, great transformation, the uh, biologically it is true or not, I will not vouch for that, but the eagle story, it is not a new story. Eagle, which uh, has a lifespan of uh, uh, 70 years around, after 30 years, as we know, the talons and claws, the beak and the feathers, they somehow grow old faster than the body itself. And then uh, unless there is a rebirth, unless there is a rejuvenation or regeneration, then uh, perhaps the eagle will not be able to live further because the capacity to catch the prey and to live is no more there. So he, the, the eagle takes a sort of so self-exile almost for around 140, 50 days, uh, goes back 
to the nest on a hilltop, then hits its beak and breaks it up. So also the claws pulls out all its feathers, goes without food during the period uh, on which the reformation takes place. So that reformation is basically a purpose, the or to relive a better life. And then yes, he gets a new beak, he gets uh, new claws and the new feathers. Again, the lifespan increases by say around 30 years more. So this learning renewal is something everybody has been telling, but here I just gave the example that in animal world also it is that. And one other fantastic example is the transmission from a uh, caterpillar uh, to the butterfly. But there it is by nature. It is not by option. It is a natural process. But in case of human beings, it has to be either a trigger has to be there, the trigger has to be from outside, or trigger has to be always from inside. When Maslow taught us the hierarchical needs, there, yes, he spoke of the basic biological needs, food, shelter, and all those physical needs, all those material needs. But while growing up, when it came to the level of self-actualization, there perhaps the meaning is something we should attain, the very purpose of life. So what is that very purpose of life? We all are not clear. And the way the things, the civilization is moving or us, moved so far, many things we are realizing now, of course it is late, but not too late. And then uh, the uh, sort of, uh, uh, that uh, the very purpose gets diluted when I talk in terms of, yes, we have all the materialistic prosperity, but is it okay when our spirituality is hollow? And by spirituality, again, let me say, I don't mean any religion. Perhaps for me, spirituality, what you see in Quran, it is all those five elements. Believe in God, but believe in karma also. No sin and believe in zakat, give the aims. So helping others. The same thing also, Christianity says, and same thing is that in our own Hindu religion also. Are we living to that? Because we have to see ourselves as the manifestation of the God, and God also lives in every living being. So are we practicing that? Are we really thinking in those terms? Material prosperity we have got, or we are getting, we're always trying to get that. Our business is aimed to create wealth, but wealth for whom? Wealth for what? Basically, the wealth is meant for the well-being of, not only of the self, but also for the larger society. And also, uh, we believe all in the Vasudeva Kudumbakam, that is the larger society with the globe as one family. And dear friends, coming to the transformation that we uh, draw inspiration from, another case is, take the case of Bandit Ratnakar. Ratnakar, the, who became the Adhikavi, Marsi Balmiki. Basically, he was a robber. Though he was born in the family of a sage, his uh, uh, family maintaining that, maintaining livelihood, drove him to an easy way of doing the things that is robbery. And when he was confronted once by Narad, when he was going to attack him, the Narad taught him uh, the very essence or purpose of life by asking him one simple question. You are killing people, you are looting people, for whom he told to, to, to uh, feed my parents, to feed my family, my wife, my children. Then Narad told him, okay, I'm here, you tie me up, I'll not be living anywhere. Go and ask them, are they sharing the sin you are committing here by killing people? He went there and everywhere he was told, it is your duty to look after us. What method you choose to fulfill your duty, fulfill your responsibility, that's not up to us. So there he gets the disillusionment. So the trigger here is by from the coach or say the mentor, Narad, and he uh, goes on uh, the meditation. And over the years, it was the, his penis which transferred him. And uh, ultimately, there was the anthill, and he comes out of the anthill as a completely purified, different person who wrote uh, Valmiki Ramayana. And of course, uh, he had uh, written also uh, the uh, guidelines how to live a good life. The name, of course, I'm not recalling right now, but he's mostly known for the Ramayana. 
Another case of transformation, if we uh, talk of and draw inspiration, uh, then uh, it is basically uh, of, uh, that of Kalidas, who is known as the Shakespeare of India. And he has, uh, you know the story, he was basically uh, not uh, at all learned, rather he was foolish enough to cut the branch of the tree on which he was climbing from the very starting of the branch itself. So by seeing that, a group of pandits who were defeated in Shastra, in scripture interpretation and uh, learning of scripture from uh, the uh, king's daughter, that the condition of marriage was, she would marry a person who would defeat uh, him, uh, defeat her in Shastra. So Kalidas was taken there by all these pandits, and there the uh, princess was told Kalidas was doing uh, the monobrat. So in monobrat uh, there would be sign language only. So there she uses sorry Kalidas used the sign language to convince her when she raised one finger, then Kalidas rose by being gave so two fingers. So that the interpretation was. She spoke that there is only one God, that is Advaita Bhad, and Kalidas, when he showed two fingers, yes, we believe in Advaita Bhad, but one is Sakara and another is Niraka. So uh, these are the process of whether there are two, three more questions. And then finally, uh, the lady got convinced, then she married Kalidas. But take the friend of Kalidas on the night when she joined the wife, and that time, there was a camel passing by, and uh, uh, he could not pronounce camel in Sanskrit. Instead of Ustra, he somehow pronounced as Utra. So there, uh, his uh, fake learning was exposed, and then he was sent out. He went to, uh, again, uh, uh, for a prayer to Goddess Kali, Goddess Saraswati, and there, uh, he took a vow and he got that enlightenment and came back. When he came back, he knocked the door of uh, the princess and the princess knowing he was Kalidas, uh, his strange husband, the princess asked in Sanskrit, Asti Kaschit Bhag Bishesha. So Kalidas was so learned by the point of time, the Mahakavi. So he came back, he wrote three uh, Kabyas on that, uh, one was, that is, Kasit Kanta Biraha Guruna, uh, that is the starting line for Meghadutam. And Kumar Sambhavam, Bhagartha Vivasam Prukthu, Asti Kasit Bhag. And then Asti, the beginning one, is Asti Tara Sang Dishi Devatatma, Himalaya Ramana Gadhi Raja. So that is from Kumar Sambhavam. So these are the two major transformations, but here uh, one is, the inner urge. The first was the urge or the trigger came from somebody, but everywhere the internal will to transform what? Take the case of another transformation, transformation of Ashok from Chandasok to Dharmasok. There, again, you can we can give credit to the preachings of Buddha. Buddha as a great guru, yes, but at the same time, it's the internalization of that learning or the feeling of uh, people getting killed. It is not the winning of the heart uh, that you achieve by sure. If you want to win the heart of people, you have to love them. And with that, basically, the transformation came and he adopted Buddhism not only for himself, but also Ahinsa Paramadharma and also his preachings also took, uh, took further preaching or spreading the Buddhism. So these are the transformative stories we have. But what I'm trying to emphasize is, though triggers will be there, we have to understand the triggers, we have to take the triggers, and then uh, we'll have to, and transformation is of course, is something which should happen uh, with inner injury. And inner injury basically, we'll have to put ourselves uh, in understanding of all our senses, and where we can overpower the evils. And there, it is going to be a journey uh, with knowledge to wisdom by use of 
विवेक और दी कंसाइंस सो डियर फ्रेंड्स द ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स वी ऑर्गेनाइज पर वैसे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी गेट समटाइम्स द कस्टमाइजेशन बट यस आवर ट्रेनिंग मॉडल शुड बी लाइक दिस द टॉपिक इज लाइक दिस सो स्किल टेक्निकल स्किल्स यस दैट इज आर देन योर मैनेजरल स्किल्स लीडरशिप स्किल्स ऑल दो थिंग्स वी टीच but there basically we don't bring in the element of the reaching out to the society not always unless you are talking on csr unless there is a dedicated topic how to contribute to the betterment of the society and that's something which we should have done perhaps if there would not have been any paris climate accord would not have really understood the way we are exploiting nature the way nature is taking its wrath uh, uh, exposing its wrath on us in different forms maybe what we call the greenhouse gases increasing uh, the climate changing uh, to the detriment of our living or the sea level increasing or the uh, snow melting in the glaciers so all those things are happening and all these realization are coming to us now when you know that our exploitation of nature over the years just for development sake which development we are talking of the metallurgy development has not really taught us a good lesson or good learning that we can carry forward not for this but not only for this generation but also for the present generation to uh pass on the glory of the uh, always i tell what sort of we inherited a will from our predecessors perhaps our forefathers inherited that will which was a better will in terms of ecology and environment but are we are we going to write a better will than our predecessors are our children going to get those better things which we enjoyed but we are just exploiting and we are not living enough for them so with that i'll now be telling what should be the content pedagogy the content and the methods for the education for the learning through training and of course experience and uh, the observation part are left to us it could be simulation it could be virtual training whatever it is can there be infusion of value and value education everywhere starting from the school the college and also in all the programs we organize if we are customizing a program for any any business organization where we are going to teach them skills really it doesn't stop us if we start the program with a meditation dedicating the entire thing to i am not telling god it could be the uh, sort of the almighty who created us it could be the ancient force a meditation and also a part of some exercise the way japanese do when they go for joining their work he sort of basically to discipline the mind and discipline the body then perhaps we can take them through the course curriculum but there the alignment of every individual with the organizational goal should also be linked to the ultimate goal for the betterment of the mankind in fact uh, in my time uh, there in fact those who know about navelli navelli had a population of something around 3 to 4 lakhs there in that township it is a very big sprawling township um over 45 uh, um square kilometer area including the mine complex and the power station complex and there uh, we used to when uh, on 26 january or 15th august after the celebration i used to invite either sadguru or sri sri to come and that is a gathering of something around 40 to 50000 people on inner engineering on knowing yourself and also developing yourself so there it is no anathema to whatever we have learned only thing is we are trying to infuse the way uh, we should work can there be a difference which will bring in betterment in our life by treating our own physical being better by enriching our own mind better and second whatever we do and deliver is it at the cost of somebody is it at the cost of the society 
because for us it is not limited to our workplace it is much beyond than that and then also we know we belong to the family we play many roles but all those roles are they are in conflict or in harmony so can we can we create a sort of harmonious existence for everybody because what basically i believe of course it is my belief i would not like to impose into on to anybody skill and competency building will continue learning will continue but once we make a person a better holistic person then perhaps the willingness and the ability part of it automatically comes a good person is also a good learner a good person is also a good worker a good person is also a, a good uh, performer but how to build that good person what is our goodness you are talking about is it is uh, uh, the, he is very competent but at the same time very toxic he is just a um, egomaniac or megalomaniac he is good very efficient but at the same time he cannot carry the team with himself he is good but he takes pleasure in in just just bullying others is our the leader see we are looking at is our the is it the person when we talk of the behavioral training is it the sort of behavioral training we are trying to give all those ceo and persons to uh, sit in the corner rooms that treat people uh, in the way that they would be afraid to come and uh, talk to you do you carry a sort of thing yes you are welcome but once the door opens the find not their boss but a tiger sitting on the chair is it that way are you human and is your approach human not not just we have we know the values the values are there written on the walls every organization has its own vision own values based on everything but ask people all these values are hanging on the wall customer friendliness how do we exhibit that what are the behavioral indicators we train but at the same time the alignment with the value system it hardly happens at least that is my experience people may differ because i have worked over so 38 39 years and still i'm working what i find people uh, just tend to work and believe uh, in a sort of uh, uh, what is now what is it for me the immediate gratification without having a vision as such one and most of the people again i'll be telling you a story which might have been told you might have heard on many occasions but there are the three stone cutters one stone cutter telling that i is just just i am i'm working i'm out i'm supposed to do like this and i'm doing like this and the person tells do you see i'm cutting the stone i'm adding my life level and the third person says look i'm cutting the stone which is going to be in the temple so the same three persons but perhaps the value addition here or the value in build in the third person reply is something that we should emulate and take the case of doctors like when we we talk in terms of the uh, approach and the spirit that doctor has a tendency many commercial doctors have a tendency to treat the patients as physical entities yes when you are operating he it is a physical entity but at the same time when you deal with a person there is emotion and once the person recovers then perhaps the treatment has to be more psychological can you can you move beyond the concept of that entity to a person who is a human being who feels who loves who smiles can you can you cause smile on his lips if you can do that perhaps you are being a better human being so uh, for 45 minutes that is something around 5 minutes more i will not take more time than that has been allotted to me but here uh, talking of the doctor the same thing applies to us everywhere we talk of empathy we talk of integrity we talk of honesty do we really walk the talk or simply we preach we sermonize so if we keep on sermonizing perhaps things will not be because uh, these days i don't know i mean how the younger generation many students are also participating for them who are the role models role models if we talk of business are the good businessmen are role models those who are creating huge wealth ambani ji yes perhaps adani is going to be another ambani and then uh, abroad we have if you count in terms of richness 
there may be 10, 11, but are they the role models? Okay, if it is profit, perhaps. If it is running a smooth business organization, perhaps yes. But are they role models the way we uh, now also speak up Jamsinji Tata or the Tata business excellence model? Or maybe the Birlas, of course, uh, they, are, they are known for the temples, but at the same time, the human values of uh, doing something good for this generation and the next generation, those are embedded. And there, the principles also they follow, they really don't compromise on things. Rather, they uphold their values. That as, as I'm told and I've experienced also, they would love not the work to be done, but not to bribe. If that is a set of belief I pursue, I carry on, then maybe. So can we also incorporate all this in the training programs we organize? Well, maybe a request may be coming, but they are perhaps starting from the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, rejuvenation of the body, the mind, and of course the skill, skill set for which you are training. And of course the outbound and other things are there, again, to develop the team spirit, a sort of holistic approach for developing people. So the first premise that I believe that yes, we all are human beings, but that should also make us behave human in all aspects, all walks of life. So that is what I call the journey from uh, the human being to being human. And another thing is in business, we all are wealth creators. We have, but we should have uh, not only the wealth creating mindset, but also we should have uh, the adherence to the value system that the wealth creation is, happens only through the value-based mechanisms and methods we have to follow. And then wealth is created for the well-being of the society. So we have to believe and do, I will not say equitable distribution, but at the same time, yes, people also should get the benefit. The society is helping us to uh, uh, create the wealth. And then we should be in a position to help the society to utilize that wealth for the well-being, or either we should be instrumental in creating the well-being of people. We have been taught so far motivation, employee engagement, but I think we should now tell people move beyond this engagement uh, to happiness index. Are we are we really making our employees, their families happy? Will they feel come whatever? I'm going to continue with this organization. But here is a leader I saw, uh, I will not say uh, jump to the uh, well for the leader or jump to the fire, but at the same time, they can visualize as, as somebody was told to look up. If you look up, then it is the responsibility of the role model also to behave, also to demonstrate what people are looking up at him. So are we providing that sort of model? And the third thing perhaps uh, is, uh, we people, we are happy with our existence. And if the existence is a cozy bed of roses, we have got a wrap of money and a good life, then we are happy with our existence. Then once we become happy and complacent with our existence, then the drive for excellence, which is, has to be a continuous process, that stops. So can we? Can we propel ourselves always that move from existence to excellence. Again, just to tell it from uh, the other round, from existence to excellence, are we propelling ourselves? And are we also encouraging others to move that way? Second, as wealth creators, are we creating the wealth to achieve a fair end with fair means, becoming the role model for others? And the third, that uh, wealth that we are creating is that going to create the well-being of not this generation, but also for the generations to come. In the process, we'll have to not only respect the environment, not only do better for the responsible way of doing the business, responsible way of doing the mining, responsible way of doing the power generation, which will give us a better and better and greener society tomorrow. Possibly it is time to reuse, to remake, to reinvent, or if I'm a miner, if I'm a digger of the mines, can I fill up once the mining content is out? Can I make it again, uh, render the land 
as good as the agricultural land and give it back to the society. So reuse, reclaim, recreate, so that the resources that are getting drained are not great drained, and we are dedicating ourselves to the betterness of humankind as a whole. So it is exactly 6.45. Uh, so now the floor okay, is sir. open for the- Thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, thank questions, you. answers, uh, yeah. and interaction. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah, so thank you very much for a wonderful talk, uh, Dr. Acharya. I think it was very enlightening, really enjoyed listening to your words of wisdom. Very lucid, you know, the very practical pointers you shared through the transformational stories. Thank you very much. So now um, we'll have the Q&A. Uh, I don't, I see only one question uh, on the chat box and that is by Dr. G.P. Rao. And uh, he's asking that how do we develop uh, the competency of integrating business and compassion. Who are such role model leaders to emulate? It has to start from self. As I told, uh, let us not wait for a trigger. Self-cleaning perhaps is the great thing that we should be doing ourselves, one. Second, yes, we also look up to have role models. And role models, of course, let me admit, are very few. We are good in preaching, we are good in giving sermons, but not that good in demonstrating our conduct, which is visible to people. So whatever we say, it is not just said, it should be demonstrated, people should view it, yes. And one more thing, uh, you find, or we all find, organizations deciding the values or putting the posters what the values they believe, but do they really give weightage to value-based behavior? I don't find in our appraisal and all other things, really, we sincerely adopt that. Because performance may come, as I told, a toxic leader also may perform. But at the same time, he is performing, but he is not allowing 10 others to perform. And as we all know, on many occasions, people leave the organization not because they are dissatisfied with the work, they are dissatisfied with the boss. So are we turning out ourselves to be persons who are encouraging enough, who are empowering enough, and who are coaching and mentoring people with them? So basically, you have to start with self. That is the way I believe. Okay. If I expect everybody to be good, then somebody has to start somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Charya. Now, I think Mr. Trivedi is there. He wants to ask a question. Please unmute yourself, uh, Mr. Trivedi. Mr. Dwedi. Dwedi, Dwedi, yes. I'm Mr. Sorry. Arji Dwedi from Bhopal chapter chairman. He's Bhopal okay. chapter. Yes, sir. Please yeah. ask your question. Yeah. Uh, Acharya ji, bahut achha aapka raha. Aur uh, mujhe wo bada achha laga ki aapne jo vidyutmao kalidas ka sambhat suraya, वो जो श्लोक है अस्ति कश्चित भाग विशेषः और इन चारों शब्दों में एक एक ग्रंथ की रचना हुई कुमार संभव अभिज्ञान साकुंतला मैं एक चीज और उसमें ऐड करना चाह एक चीज और ऐड करना चाहता था आप आचार्य हैं आप आचार्य हैं तो हिंदी समझ में आ रही होगी ऐसा मुझे लग रहा है आ, मैं हिंदी समझता हूं हिंदी पढ़ा तो नहीं हूं लेकिन बहुत दिन चूंकि बाहर रहा हूं बिहार वगैरह में रहा हूं मैं हिंदी समझ सकता हूं बोल सकता हूं और हिंदी में कविता और गद्य भी लिखता हूं बहुत अच्छी बात है तो मेरा ये कहना था कि गोस्वामी तुलसीदास जी का भी उदाहरण उसी तरह का है गोस्वामी तुलसीदास जी को भी आ, उनकी पत्नी ने कहा था रत्नावली ने कि तुम यहाँ दौड़े दौड़े मेरे पास चले आए हो तो अस्त चर्म में देह मम तामे ऐसी प्रीति उनने जब झटका दिया तो उसके बाद वो बड़े भारी कवि बन गए रामचरित माना इतना बड़ा ग्रंथ बना कोई नहीं है तो सवाल मेरा ये है कि रत्नावली के कारण से तुलसीदास के स्पिरिचुअल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हो गया विद्युतमा के कारण कालिदास का हो गया हम लोगों को रोज घर में पत्नियां इस तरह का ताना देती हैं तो हम लोग क्यों नहीं ट्रांसफॉर्मल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हो पा रहा है देखिए मैं जो बताया कि आउटसाइड ट्रिगर जो है वो आपको सचेत कराता है लेकिन उसके बाद जागना है नहीं जागना आपके ऊपर निर्भर करता है हो सकता है कि भाभी जी आपको ताना जो देती होगी आपको ताना सुन के अच्छा लगता हो कि बिस्तर में सो जाना लेकिन बिस्तर थोड़ के सन्यास में चले जाना 
उतना फिगर आपको नहीं मिलता होगा <laughs> सही बात है सही बात और बेसिकली सुनिए बेसिकली मैं जो well कहा कि ट्रांसफर के लिए इनर इंजीनियरिंग की जरूरत है हम इंजीनियरिंग हर जगह लगाते हैं लेकिन हम अगर अपने आप नहीं जागेंगे तो कोई आपको जगा नहीं सकता हाँ ये जरूर है कि जैसे सोए हुए जागना या जागते हुए सोना शुरू से आपकी अगर आदत डाल दी जाए जैसे मैं बता गुरुकुल में जो आपको समझाया जाता था पढ़ाया जाता था बट यस yes, गुरुकुल शिक्षा में भी और सत्यमा जैसे भी निकले हैं अर्जुन भी निकला है दुर्योधन भी वहीं से निकला है तो जो प्रकृति है वो तो प्रकृति अलग अलग रहता है सबका बट एट दी सेम टाइम दुर्योधन जानता था कि क्या सही है क्या गलत है वो तो जानबूझ के गलत करता था तो मेरा कहना है कि हमारे बच्चे और जो हमारा आज, आज के दिन में एजुकेशन की प्रणाली है वो सही गलत का दिशा निर्देश देने में हम लोग सक्षम नहीं हो रहे हैं आप बताएं मैं जानता हूं मेरे बच्चे जो मैं बाहर रहा बाहर पढ़े तो उसमें इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूल में पढ़े क्या हम उनको सही में क्या क्या अच्छा ही अवेलेबल है हमारे घर में धर्म के ऊपर नहीं जाऊंगा अली हमारा इतिहास में इतिहास में क्या क्या चीज अवेलेबल है उनको हम एजुकेट करा पाए हैं अच्छी तरह से वो ब्लेम तो हमें लेना चाहिए हम सिर्फ स्कूल को क्यों ब्लेम देंगे लेकिन हमारा जो एजुकेशन रहा है कि मगब करो मगब करके कोई जरूरी नहीं है सभी को मैथमेटिशियन बनना कोई जरूरी नहीं है सभी को इंजीनियर बनना कोई आदमी अगर बनता है एक अच्छा किसान भी बनता है तो बहुत अच्छी बात है लेकिन हमारा शिक्षा जो है उस ढंग से अभी तक नहीं हुआ है हम जो है धंधा मूलक और व्यवहार मूलक शिक्षा उसके ऊपर उतना ध्यान नहीं दिए है बदल रहा है अब देखेंगे जो रामकृष्ण परमश का ये देखिए जो रामकृष्ण मिशन है उसका शिक्षा देखिए आज के दिन में है ऐसा नहीं है और आपके अब ये जाइए जगी वासुदेव का जो कैमरपुर में है वहां देखिए और श्री श्री का जहाँ आपका वेद वेदांत सबको शिक्षा दिया जा रहा है लेकिन दैट इज मिनी स्कूल और वो उन्ही लोगों के लिए है जो अफोर्ड नहीं कर सकते जो कि उनके पेरेंट्स पैसा नहीं दे सकते बड़े स्कूल में पढ़ने के लिए अब वहां भेज रहे हैं लेकिन अभी भी वो शिक्षा हम लोग का एक जो बोलता है कि हमें चाहिए उस ढंग से हम लोग अपना नहीं रहे ओके थैंक यू सर सो दिस अनदर क्वेश्चन बाय मिस्टर आर एस डबास एंड मिस्टर डबास इज आस्किंग हाउ योर एच आर बैकग्राउंड हैज हेल्प्ड यू टू बी सक्सेसफुल सीएमडी ऑफ अ नवरात्रा पीएसयू एंड ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग इट दवा साहब दिस इज ए क्वेश्चन पर माइनिंग एंड पावर कंपनी सो दिस क्वेश्चन आई वॉज आस्ट बाई दिस सिलेक्टर्स इन फैक्ट दिक्रेटरी वॉज अनिल स्वरूप द टाइम ही वॉज दर देंबर ऑफ द सिलेक्शन बोर्ड ही ऑल्सो आस्ट मी दिस सेम क्वेश्चन ऑफ दैट टाइम बिफोर माई सिलेक्शन before my performance but how would you like to do big the hr head i had just told i have understood the minds of people so i have to reach out and i don't think i will have to be a technical expert to run a technical company so basically i believe in human engineering and then the uh, successful and expert engineers those are there with me they will be doing everything and i will be just giving them uh, the enabling environment to do and develop things and my role will be basically to manage the boundaries where the business environment is maintained in a competitive manner keeping in view the overall business environment here in india and abroad keeping in view the ministry requirements and guidelines and keeping in view the nation's development plan and that is what i followed the was sir and basically uh, in fact uh, coming from odisha and going to tamil nadu as you understand there anybody a non tamil speaking man is not basically welcome though things are changing but there uh, let me tell you that when i left over the by almost 9 years i stayed over there so we used to play holi and diwali with equal aplomb with equal uh, celebration the way we used to 
uh, uh, celebrate all those things in North India. So basically, once people accept you, then they are willing to accept all the good things that you give them. But you keep yourself aloof, and there you refrain away from social engineering. Like, like, let me tell you the one thing. I mean, I will not say it's a transformation, but basically to enable everybody to understand each other culture. Though normally, if I tell officially, it is basically the three occasions that we uh, officially celebrate. One is uh, your uh, uh, 15th August Independence Day, and the Republic Day 20th January, and the uh, this thing your Mahatma Gandhi's birthday, and another one came the Ambedkar's birthday. But there, we used to celebrate 14 functions in which the organization used to patronize, inviting, like we used to celebrate Ugadi, we used to celebrate Holi, we used to celebrate Diwali, Dasera, Muharram, in fact, we used to organize Iftar party, we used to organize Good Friday, and there, we were giving prominence to all those groups, linguistic groups or the cultural groups um, functioning over there to encourage them to tell the mainstream what are the good things they have in there. Because as, as an Oriya, I may not understand what exactly Chhat Puja is or why Chhat Puja is done. Or being an Oriya, I don't really understand why Onam is celebrated. So can I be a part of Onam celebration? Can I be a part of the Wadi celebration? So that is what we did. And let me tell you, people, the, the, the sort of difference that they had where the workers, they are the supervisors, they are the officers, they are the board people. We never felt that. They all we all were in one stream when all these celebrations were concerned. So, so that, that that is the sort of thing I thought uh, that I could be doing for bringing people on one platform, binding them together, and that is what happened. There was some am I uh, just uh, able to respond to your uh, whatever you wanted to know. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, we know that NLC has grown a lot in terms and diversified a lot into solar, into many, many areas, new units also. And uh, you have certainly contributed a lot. And thank NLC, you for NLC, in fact, it is 64 years now. And uh, uh, it was the pioneer company in power generation, which trained uh, the fifth batch of NTPC trainees. Because they basically pioneered in lignite based power generation. And lignite is basically the uh, sort of premature coal, let me put it that way, pacha coal. But uh, they were sitting on a lot of money and confined to that area uh, and being satisfied as the best company there in down south. So I thought with all the capabilities available, resources available, there one hand miners, other hand the power generators, why not to take them beyond lignite, beyond navelly? So now we are in almost 10 states, and as a public sector, NLC became the first company to go beyond 1,000 megawatt solar. So now we are in a big way into coal, big way into uh, the uh, solar generation, wind-based power generation. So all those good things are happening. Thank you for wonderful saying. Thank you very much. Very well explained. So uh, I think there's a last question, uh, which is uh, from... Uh, Lakshmi Narayan Reddy sir, and uh, he's asking that uh, Mr. Acharya, what is your take on new norms of working for HR professionals? I think it is good and it is a hybrid one. Hybrid in the sense that earlier uh, we didn't uh, uh, you make use of uh, digitalization and these artificial intelligence and all those virtual platforms. Now, in fact, uh, we are using it. Training has become the sort of e-learning platform. You have LinkedIn, you have e-learning, you have the virtual classes. And uh, uh, the sort of uh, digitalization was happening. It was taking a lot of time, but COVID really gave us a sort of testing ground, how quickly you can transform yourself to adopt these new things. And then uh, the agility and mobility these two things we learned in the present scenario. Uh, that something today is happening, tomorrow you have to. If it is health, safeguarding health, ensuring your hygiene, so ensuring the norms that are coming from Mr. Bhalla, uh, the Home Secretary, to be implemented, how it is to be put in the industry, and those norms to be again 
revisited so that it suits your work environment, like NLC, like NTPC. You cannot dispense the entire physical working. But at the same time, you can limit the physical working wherever it is possible, the remote working, the remote monitoring, do that. So develop a hybrid model. So that hybrid model, in fact, most of the HR people uh, became adept in doing that, and they have done. So they have proven their agility. They have proven their adaptability and flexibility. And unless that is done, perhaps we will be rendering ourselves very relevant, not very relevant to the changing scenario and the changing situation. Okay, thank you very much. Sastri Shab, kya chup chap bethe hai? Sir, I am enjoying, thoroughly enjoying. Yeah. Sastri Shab se humara purane talukat, purane mulagat hai. To bade achche jarad bhi hai. Yes. And he's also our vice chair, chairman of Delhi Shab. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. So now I would request uh, Mr. Shastri to, you know, propose a vote of thanks. So, thank you very much, Priti uh, Mahadev. Shastri ji, thanks to Gairo ko diya jata hai. Apro ko thanks thodi diya jata hai. Hame, Dimitri Shab, Hindi bolna shikha diye. You speak Hindi so well. It's me. You are right. You are at home, sir. You are at home. धारा प्रवाह हिंदी आपके मुंह से सुन के बड़ा सुखद आश्चर्य हुआ वाह 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 देखिए कैसे साहित्य बोले सुखद आश्चर्य हुआ कैसा आश्चर्य सुखद आश्चर्य यानी जो विशेषण है ये विशेषण का यूज भी सीखना पड़ेगा आपसे प्लेजेंट सरप्राइज सो इट वाज इंडीड वेरी वेरी एनग्रोसिंग वेरी वेरी एलेबोरेट एंड वेरी यू नो फुल ऑफ डीप थॉट्स and uh, since i share the similar values i was i thoroughly enjoyed your uh, uh, talk which underlined the importance of inner urge to transform as mr dwedi ji asked you about external trigger but you responded by saying that yes it is not necessary that uh, always the external trigger will lead to transformation primarily external trigger may ignite the spark but it is the inner urge which will lead you to real transformation aapne badi achhi achhi baatein kahi hai ki jaagte hue sona sote hue jaagna din the bhagavad gita lord krishna said yan shah sarva bhutanam tasyam jagarti sanyami so i could relate all those things bahut maza aaya aapne ekdam aaj ka jo session hai anand aaya ant mein to ant mein to ye kehte hai na ki sarva dharman parityajya maave kam sharanam braja रत्नावली का एग्जाम्पल दिया उसमें भी जो तुलसीदास ने बाल कांड में कहा है सुनिए उसी तरह के एग्जाम्पल आपको देवदास में भी मिलेगा तुलसीदास का रत्नावली और देवदास में स्टोरी में बहुत ज्यादा अंतर नहीं है लेकिन यहाँ तुलसीदास मिले और वहां जो है वो सज्जन जो है देवदास बन के रह गए देवदास से रामचरित मानस नहीं लिख पाए वो देवदास ही रह गए तो रज्जव यथा हेर ब्रह्मा जो कहा कि रस्सी में सांप का जो भ्रम होता है जी तो रत्नावली ने कहा कि भाई तुम सांप को पकड़ के मेरे प्रेम में यहाँ तक चले आए इतनी प्रीति अगर राम में होती तो उद्धार हो जाता और फिर वास्तव में बाद में उद्धार हुआ भी एनी anyway, तो बहुत अच्छी बात कही सर आपने और हमारे भी एक बॉस थे वो बड़ी अच्छी बात कहते थे यही कि भाई सोते हुए को तो आप जगा सकते हो लेकिन जागते हुए भी जो सोने का अभिनय करता है उसका आप कुछ नहीं कर सकते तो एज मैनेजर्स जब हम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में टीम्स को मैनेज करते हैं तो इस तरह के चीजें हमारे सामने आती हैं और वहां पर इस तरह का जो विजडम है वो काफी काम आता है एंड यू ऑल्सो अंडरलाइन द नीड टू बिकम गुड ह्यूमन बींग्स ह्यूमन बींग्स एंड बींग ह्यूमन दैट इज वॉट मैटर्स मोस्ट and that is uh, equally applicable in the content that uh, one of the participants asked you that how did you succeed as the chairman of uh, nlc so uh, obviously the answer is that being human is one of the exclusive qualities which enabled you to uh, demonstrate excellent performance as the cmd and uh, you also mentioned about wealth creation through ethical means that is what 
all have emphasized in our culture chanakya also uh, in his sutras highlighted the need for you know wealth creation through ethical means and finally you also uh, stressed upon the need to move beyond from existence to excellence so thank you very much sir for your uh, uh, well thought and deeply thought session which uh, all of us enjoyed thoroughly i on behalf of the istd delhi chapter under the leadership of our chairman mr mukesh jain our uh, honorary secretary mr ajay sahu uh, our treasurer mr arpit suri our program coordinator uh, madam pratima and our uh, managing committee members ms sucharita yashwant chauhan uh, express sincere gratitude and thanks to you for having spared your valuable time to share your wisdom with us and i also thank the distinguished uh, participants like dr g p rao dr r s debas professor sudhir jain mr r g dwivedi from bhopal chapter mr p mohan nayar from tiruvananthapuram and mr lakshmi narayan reddy from chennai and all other participants due to whose presence this session could become a great success thank you very much sir once again thank you all and now i hand over to mr mukesh jain for making the next announcement the pleasure was mine the pleasure and privilege was mine sir. thank you acharya sir thank you thank you very much and uh, our next program we are planning uh, for second of uh, april so uh, it's not yet decided we'll come back to you soon but our uh, major program will be on 10th of uh, april when we'll celebrate our 51st ikyavanva uh, foundation day in a big way so all the announcement will be sent to you uh, soon so till that goodbye and thank you very much i'll be glad to be with you thank you thank you very much dr acharya i think we have so many appreciations you know on the chat box and uh, some people also have pointed out that you know uh, this 45 minutes were not enough we need to have another one you know yeah. with you uh, in, in fact prithima ji i don't know whether it's a coincidence cbc has appointed me as the uh, independent external monitor for shipping mm -hmm. corporation as well as uh, uh, the uh, punjab national bank yesterday okay. i i told the chairman of punjab national bank that there was the first meeting yesterday i mm -hmm. told dekho bhai nirav modi to leke chala gaya abhi sudharne ke liye hum log ko bulane se kya fayda पर आगे सर आप जैसे काबिल आदमियों को रखेंगे तो आगे नहीं जाएगा ना सर फिर ये भी तो है बहुत बढ़िया लगा बहुत वेरी वेरी सो बहुत दिनों के बाद आपसे बहुत 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 दिनों के बाद बढ़िया स्माइल आपकी कीप इट अप बहुत बढ़िया जी थैंक यू थैंक यू गिव गिव ए बिग राउंड ऑफ अप्लाउड टू आचार्य साहब थैंक यू हम चाहेंगे कभी आगे जब आईएसटीडी का अगर कोई जब फिजिकली मिलना जुलना संभव होगा आपके यहां का चैप्टर को बोलेंगे भुवनेश्वर में ऑर्गेनाइज कराया जाए ताकि हम सबको आप आप सबको हम होस्ट कर सके यहां थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू श्योर सर थैंक यू thanks a lot thank you bye thank you